The best diet for high blood pressure and high cholesterol. If you're concerned about the health of your cardiovascular system, keeping your blood pressure low and blood cholesterol in a healthy range are important goals. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that about one-third of adults have high blood pressure and almost as many adults have high cholesterol, both conditions that may have few symptoms but nevertheless raise your risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. Paying close attention to your diet can help you control both your blood pressure and your cholesterol level. Sodium and Cholesterol Sodium is an essential mineral your body uses to maintain fluid balance, and it also plays a central role in regulating your blood pressure. According to the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, consuming too much sodium can cause high blood pressure. It says you should consume no more than 2,300 mg daily, or about 1 teaspoon of table salt, or no more than 1,500 mg if you already have hypertension. Your body also needs cholesterol as part of cellular membranes and for many biochemical reactions, but you should consume no more than 300 mg daily, according to the The Publication, Dietary Guidelines for Americans, 2010. Cholesterol travels in your blood combined with protein, as a lipoprotein. High levels of low-density lipoprotein, or bad cholesterol, contribute to fatty deposits called plaque on artery walls. Plaque can narrow arteries and raise your risk of coronary artery disease, heart attack and stroke. The DASH. Diet Plan. The National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute suggests adopting the dietary approaches to stop hypertension eating plan to help prevent high blood pressure. The DASH plan also contains recommended amounts and types of dietary fats that can help keep your blood cholesterol level under control. A primary goal of the plan is to limit sodium intake by minimizing use of table salt and consumption of salty foods, helping to keep daily intake of salt at or below 1 teaspoon daily. The plan also indicates that your daily fat intake shouldn't exceed 27% of your total calories and should be mostly unsaturated fat, with only 6% or less of your calorie intake from saturated, animal-based fats. Choosing Healthy Fats to help lower your blood cholesterol, minimize your intake of fatty meats such as steak, hamburger, bacon and sausage. Opt for lean cuts with little or no visible fat. Choose lean poultry cooked without skin and add fish to meals often because fish contains healthy, omega-3 fatty acids that help lower cholesterol. Dietary Guidelines for Americans, 2010, recommends you replace butter with a reduced fat margarine and use low-fat or non-fat dairy products instead of full-fat versions. Avoid trans fats, an unhealthy type of solid fat added to processed foods and baked goods. In cooking, use healthy vegetable oils such as canola, olive or safflower oil. Check food labels, and limit your intake of foods containing partially hydrogenated oils, which contain trans fats. Managing Dietary Salt you can help lower your sodium intake and risk of high blood pressure by substituting herbs and spices for salt at the table or in recipes. Avoid salty snacks and opt for unsalted choices such as nuts and popcorn. Also limit your intake of cured, salted meats such as ham, and check labels of lunch meats for sodium content, opting for low-salt versions. Choose low-salt canned vegetables, or rinse salted vegetables before using them, and check that Nutrition Facts label on canned foods for the amount of added sodium. When dining out, request that salt be omitted from your food. For help designing an appropriate dietary plan, talk to your doctor or a registered dietitian. Americans' Addiction to Salt Sodium is essential in small amounts. Your body needs some sodium to function properly because it helps maintain the right balance of fluids in your body, helps transmit nerve impulses, and influences the contraction and relaxation of muscles. But Americans eat too much salt, and this overindulgence is prompting the Food and Drug Administration to consider limiting the amount of sodium allowed in processed and packaged foods. According to Health.com, the average American consumes nearly 50% more sodium than experts recommend, most of it from processed, packaged and restaurant foods. This excess sodium can cause high blood pressure and increase the risk for a heart attack or stroke. Sodium is often hidden in foods that don't taste salty, such as cheddar cheese and many processed foods. Salt can also be found in many substances that you might not suspect. Sodium can be an ingredient in medicines, especially many non-prescription medications. 
Examples are members of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug family, or NSAIDs, as well as antacids. Sodium is listed on product ingredient labels, so check your medications. Many canned and other processed foods contain high amounts of sodium, so it is important to read package labels. Processed or refined foods, such as instant soups, packaged mixes and snack items, usually contain high amounts of salt. By eating fewer of these foods and more fresh fruits, vegetables and low-fat dairy foods you can increase your intake of important nutrients such minerals and vitamins while reducing your salt intake. Increasing potassium and magnesium intake by eating more fruits and vegetables can help lower systolic and diastolic blood pressure by 2 to 6 points. Foods high in potassium include bananas, dried apricots, cantaloupe, orange juice and potatoes with the skin on. Spinach, broccoli, nuts, seeds and legumes are good sources of magnesium, another healthy mineral. You can limit dietary sodium by restricting the use of ready-mixed sauces, seasoning and salad dressings, frozen dinners, and canned soups, which are usually high in sodium. Choose products labeled low sodium that contain less than 140 mg of sodium per serving. Eat lots of fresh or frozen fruits and vegetables, they contain important nutrients and very little sodium. Remove the salt shaker on the table and use salt substitutes, but sparingly. When cooking, use half of the salt called for in recipes. Nutrition to help your liver. Keep your liver happy. Your body's largest internal organ is an important player. It helps turn food into nutrients. It also filters toxins and breaks them down so your body can get rid of them. You can make your liver's job easier and yourself healthier if you eat the right things. A balanced diet with whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and lean protein is a good start. Leafy greens. Free radicals are molecules that can damage your cells and cause problems, including liver disease. Substances called antioxidants can help get rid of them. Leafy greens like spinach, kale, and collards are loaded with antioxidants. They're also packed with fiber, and other things your liver needs. Grapefruit. This citrus favorite has powerful antioxidants that may help protect your cells and ease the inflammation that can lead to liver disease. But be careful with it if you take certain medicines for high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or mental health. Grapefruit can affect how they work. Talk with your doctor first if you're on meds for any of those things. Oatmeal. Foods high in fiber, like this breakfast favorite, can help protect your liver from inflammation. They also may help keep your blood sugar and electrolytes in line. Other good sources of high fiber whole grains include, brown rice. Unbuttered popcorn. 100% whole wheat bread. Apples. Studies have shown that fruits high in fiber, like apples, may help people who have fatty liver disease, especially those who are obese. Make sure you leave the skin on. That's where most of the fiber is. Other fruits with lots of fiber include, bananas, oranges, strawberries, raisins. Skinless chicken breasts. Your body needs protein to build up your organs, including your liver, and keep them healthy. But your liver doesn't need a lot of fat. Lean poultry, without the skin, can be a good way to get the protein you need. Grill it or bake it, don't fry it. Salmon. It's loaded with protein, but that's not all. This popular fish also has omega-3 fatty acids, which may lower your cholesterol, ease inflammation, and help you stay at a healthy weight. All of those things help your liver. Aim for two to four servings of salmon a week. Walnuts. Nuts can be a good snack choice for your liver. Walnuts, in particular, are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, and fiber. But a little goes a long way. Aim for only about 10 walnuts a day. The fat and calories can add up if you munch on too many. Beans. You don't have to eat meat to get protein. You can get it, and plenty of fiber, from beans. And they don't have the bad, saturated fats found in some protein that comes from animals. Healthy oils. Take unhealthy saturated and trans fats, like butter and margarine, out of your diet. Sub in better choices. For example, go with extra virgin olive oil and canola oil for cooking and baking. Watch the amounts, though. A light touch may be enough. Coffee. 
your morning habit may not just get your day going, it might also help keep your liver healthy. Scientists aren't sure why, but studies show that a few cups a day may lower your chances of liver cancer. Researchers are also looking into whether certain chemicals in coffee may help slow down conditions like cirrhosis, liver fibrosis, and other types of chronic liver disease. Green tea. This trendy favorite has antioxidants and other chemicals that may help protect your liver from cell damage and inflammation. Drinking it regularly may lower your chances of fatty liver disease, hepatitis, cirrhosis, and chronic liver disease. Water. This makes up 73% of your liver, so it's important to make sure you have enough in your system to keep it working the way it should. A lack of water can hurt your kidneys, too. That can take a toll. What not to eat. Along with eating the right foods, it's also important to stay away from the wrong ones. The biggest threats to your liver include foods that are fried, high in saturated fat, processed. Keep an eye on alcohol. In general, women should have no more than one adult beverage a day, and men no more than two. But talk to your doctor about what's right for you. Don't detox. A cleanse might sound like a good idea, but there's no proof that any special diet will help get toxins out of your liver. Your liver does a good job of that already. And some detox diets can cause side effects like cramping, nausea, or dehydration. They can also keep you from getting enough vitamins or minerals. If you're looking for a healthy change of pace, you could take bad fats and sugar out of your diet or cut out alcohol. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe to my channel Be Healthy.